Hi, this is TapCat, and today I'd like to talk to you about the best build and equipment for your specialist in XCOM 2. Now we're going to run through all of the abilities. I will say up front that while I tend to be very aggressive in my attempts to kill aliens as quickly as possible with all of the other classes, I tend to use specialist as my safety net. So we're going to primarily follow the battle medic course to make sure we keep all of our other soldiers alive. And in that vein, I'm going to start with medical protocol. Without this, you cannot heal remotely by sending the gremlin. You have to walk up to the wounded soldier and heal him. And on timed missions, that is very problematic. Now, revival protocol is not quite as essential as this, but what it does do is allows you to restore any soldier that's been disoriented, stunned, panicked, unconscious, and put them right back in the fight, no delay. And that is very useful. If you're going for the Alien Hunters DLC and you have to fight the Alien Rulers in particular, then I highly recommend taking this ability. Field Medic along with Medical Protocol, these are probably the two cornerstone abilities if you want to have any real healing going on on the battlefield. Instead of having one or two charges, this gives you an extra two. Very, very useful. Now between covering fire and threat assessment, in a way it doesn't matter which one you pick because quite honestly, neither one is particularly useful. I'm going to take threat assessment because each of them are, are revolving around the idea of getting a chance at more Overwatch fire. But threat assessment puts it in the hands of somebody that might be closer to the enemy. Ever Vigilant and Guardian, this is another pair that uh, are a little lackluster, but I have come to appreciate Ever Vigilant a bit more recently. And in particular, if you remember that you have it, you can take advantage of this to give your specialist extra mobility on a turn when you're planning on going on Overwatch. Now, restoration is what I think of as my in case of emergency break glass ability. Uh, this is when things go horribly wrong. You may have three or four squad mates that are wounded. And even if somebody is just panicking in addition to that, this will cause your gremlin to fly around and fix all of them up. So we're going to take that as well. Now let's talk about weapon upgrades. So as with pretty much everybody except Rangers, you want the best scope you can find. And then I would actually say the second spot, there's a little bit more flexibility than most. An expanded magazine is nice, but specialists don't chew through the ammo like some classes and they start with a, four, a magazine of four. So that's not the end of the world. Lately, I've been putting repeaters on because it gives you a small chance of an instant kill, which is pretty amazing. Hair trigger could also be good. You know, you could take a second shot or something like that if that, you know, comes up. Again, you only have a small chance. Uh, but I think it adds a little spice to the specialist. It gives you something to hope for the repeater in particular, because it's pretty spectacular when your specialist fires at an Andromedan or, you know, a gatekeeper or something, an Archon, and they die. Just boom, instant kill. Now for the PCS, my top preference would be for the aim bonus that Perception will grant you. Since I recommend the same thing for both Grenadiers and Sharpshooters, you may not be able to get enough of them to go around. And if you don't, I would definitely say the Specialist is the one that I would withhold it from and prioritize the others first. So if you can't get one of those, what should you use as a substitute? Well, I would probably either use the uh, Speed to add to her mobility or possibly agility to give her a chance to dodge attacks. Now for the loadout, this is going to be really simple because for your specialist to be any good at all as a healer and take advantage of all those abilities we just gave, 
you have to have the medic kit. This is not optional. And likewise, even though we didn't go the route of combat hacking, you want a skull jack. Once you do the skull mine project to upgrade it, it gives you a nice bonus to hacking. Uh, you can kill advent troops with this. And again, it's not really optional. These are the two items that you need to have. Now, a quick word on the Gremlin. You'll get a Gremlin Mark I to start with. You really want to upgrade this as quick as you reasonably can. So once the mech breakdown becomes available in research, that will unlock the Mark II. And the Sectopod breakdown unlocks the Mark III. And this will give you, you know, like extra uses of some abilities, better hacking skills, and so forth. It's well worth upgrading all the way up to Mark III. All right. If you've made it this far, then hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please give it a like so other people can find it too. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope we see you next time.